Hi, it's Nikki the Viking from Two Tribes Primal Living and today is Thursday, February 20th, 2020 and I wanted to talk today a little bit about why off-grid and maybe some of the fears um, of living off-grid that you may have or others may have. Um, why off-grid is probably a huge question that many may ask. Um, even of themselves, if they are considering a minimalist lifestyle or simplifying their home or their life, um, but why off-grid? There's a belief, or actually it's not a belief, it's a reality for, for me and for my husband. Um, authenticity, what does that mean? That means being authentically who we are here in, inside versus trying to please others and what others think we should be doing. So when others have comments or fears or or expectations of where we should go, what we should do, how we should do it, that we are not being authentic. We are living our lives based on what others think. And then there's the negativity that follows that. So if you don't live your life the way somebody else thinks you should live your life, you don't believe in the same deities that others think you should believe in, you don't eat the foods that others think you should eat, you don't join in the events or celebrations that others think you should join in, then somehow, if you don't do all that, you're, you're not living your life. Well, no, you're not being authentic. Because if those things don't resonate with you inside, um, then you truly aren't being authentic. So we, we want to live an authentic life. And off-grid provides that. Nature, whether it's the ocean, whether it's the mountain, whether it's the desert, um, it all stimulates me and my husband in such a way that we find peace, happiness, bliss, whether we're bouldering in, in California or we're hiking some of the forests in Arkansas, um, some of the most beautiful waterfalls we've seen, some of the most beautiful landscape was in Arkansas, uh, whether we're hiking through the mountains of New Mexico, whether we're driving to the mountains of Colorado, fishing in at the top of a mountain in, in New Mexico or Colorado, lakes, I mean there's so much, it generates an energy and a happiness that many people can't experience and don't experience because they can't get out of their cage of what others think they should be, how they should dress, where they should vacation, what they should eat, how they, you know, and I say that over and over because I think it's very, very relevant to why off-grid. So off-grid allows for us the opportunity to let go of all that and get away um, where we're happy, where we're constantly nourished. It's, it is our nutrition. That being said, when I look at off-grid, I look at the differences in the definitions of off-grid. So one guy might have one definition and one lady may have another definition. Definitions vary when it comes to off-grid um, for some. It means complete remote, detached, zero internet, zero electricity, zero water, zero interaction. But that has its own, own uh, diagnostic qualities, if you will. Then someone here might say, okay, no, I have Wi-Fi and internet and I have solar power and I have my own system, my septic system and my own running water system, um, but I'm not attached to any public utilities. And then you might have someone over here who believes that off-grid just means I, I'm canning my own foods, I'm growing, yeah, that's more of a, a homesteading. Um, but they're off-grid, they're remote, but they still get public utilities, still get public trash, or maybe they don't get public trash, but they get water, electricity, um, maybe some gas. So there's a variance in what defines off-grid. Um, to us, we will have access to Wi-Fi, we will have access to computer, we will have access to video systems, we will have access to electricity through the solar system, uh, solar power. We will have access to water in a limited capacity, but a constant capacity. So a little more resourcefulness regarding water. So off-grid for us is all about um, being away from the things that don't make us happy and in a space where things do make us happy. It's also about connecting to our ancestors and I hold my, my Viking drinking horn, which I don't drink alcohol, 
Um, but I do fill my Viking drinking horn with the beverage that I drink um, in honor, or it's the intention behind it. Um, for my ancestors, and my ancestors, my husband's ancestors, they didn't have the luxuries of Wi-Fi. They didn't have the luxuries of all this that we have around us. They, but they were happy. They were happy until somebody came in and took away their happiness by telling them what they should be, who they should be, how they should be, um, what they should wear, how they should dance, how they should dress, where they should worship. And that really, that really jacked with uh, the flow of, of nature. So why off-grid is all about those elements in terms of, of authenticity. So we want to get back to our roots. We want to get back to doing those things that bring us joy and happiness. And we want to get back to our ancestral lineage. So I always say skull. Um, but we want to get back to those things that, that are who we are here on the intrinsic level, not who we are here on what others think we should be, our degrees, our credentials, all of that stuff. The fears that surround off-grid living are, are real, um, but they're no different than city life. People get so wrapped up in um, their own worlds and their own expectations that they forget that not everybody is on their journey. So from a city standpoint, um, let's talk about weather. Uh, we survived Hurricane Harvey here in where we live. Uh, drew, blew in. That was that was a horrific experience for me, specifically. Um, very very horrific experience, and I wasn't sure if I was going to make it. So that was in a city with people, um, and it was nature. So I, easily in that moment, I could have easily been harmed. I could have easily been killed, and maybe someone would have found me, maybe not for a few days. So weather in a remote location is really no different. It's are you prepared? Now we were prepared for the hurricane. Um, to some degree we were prepared. We are prepared out there. It's about having warmth, it's about having the right clothing, it's about having enough wood, it's about having uh, knowing what to do, how to access food. Um, do you have enough food stored up? And we do. So, you know, those are fears. You know, what if you freeze to death? Well, what if the hurricane came and blew, blew us away? You, you, they're, they're very, very similar arguments. Um, it's just that we look at that single worst case possibility versus the endless possibilities. And um, when we focus on that one thing, we tend to, to go down that route. So that's a, that's a fear that some may have. Um, we don't have that fear. We're both very capable and we're not very far from a town. So people, you know, off grid doesn't mean we're hundreds of miles from the nearest person. We have neighbors. Um, we're just on a acreage, uh, 80, 90, 100 acres of land and remote. We're about 20 minutes from a town driving down the mountain. So there's a Dollar General, there's the stores, there's restaurants. So we're not gonna be running around in, in animal skin wraps. Well, we might, barefooted. Um, but we have access. We have a, a co-op where we're gonna access groceries such as or, or growing, growing food so that we can swap out as well from what we grow. Um, so that, that's an optional food. It's just a different lifestyle. We're not on a commune. I'm not saying anything against communal life. We're just, that's just not for us. So we will be with sometimes two medical providers that are, they know how to heal, they know how to fix, they know how to, um, they've got much experience and credentials in their respective disciplines. So I'm not concerned with the physical aspect, uh, the medical aspect. And, um, you know, this would be two of the most prevalent, the weather and, and healthcare. Then you get hygiene. Well, we, I know how to take a bath. I've got plenty of soap. I'm learning how to make soap, but I've got plenty of, of, of good soap. Um, laundry, we have a green crank it out laundry uh, wash machine. Nature provides good air drying. So all of those things that people worry about, um, 
worries really come from within. They tend to be fears manifested in ourselves, reflective of what we believe would be the worst case scenario. So if I put that on somebody else, that other person, they're on their own journey. They, that might not even be a fear to them. It might be for me. Um, I will say that my husband, he's out of 40,000 fears, he probably has one or two, and they're very short-lived. For me, out of 40,000 fears, I might have 100, and they're short-lived, but they go away. I don't live in fear. Um, I learned that a long time ago to let go of those, those types of fears. Doesn't mean I don't have them, it just means <clears throat> I easily kind of release them. I read a story the other day, um, it was actually two days ago, about a man, and it was on an off-grid forum, uh, about a man who had died alone, and I, and I say this is so sad, he had died alone, with, living without power and water, and I thought, oh wow, you know, where, where was he living? As I read the article and I got into it, the man lived in a, in a city, he had his utilities turned off during the summer, and he froze to death over the winter because he couldn't pay his utility bills. And whether he had family or anyone around, obviously he didn't, and they found him after trying to reach him during the winter. So, you know, who knows? Did they know he didn't have power? Um, there's an element of responsibility that one takes, whether you're in the city or you're in the wild, to yourself that you must have in order to survive. And we take a lot of things for granted in the city because we have such a flow of people. And off-grid, you don't have that flow. Um, so we're, we're completely capable people. Um, I had a nickname, I've always had a nickname called the hippie, although I don't resonate with being a hippie um, because hippie has many definitions just like off-grid does. I am natural, I am free, um, I don't, take intoxicants or a lot of medications or I don't worry about what others think of me or, or how I look in another's eyes. I speak my truth. If I want to fucking cuss, I cuss. Um, and that does it. Some people don't like that and that's okay. That's their journey. It's not my journey. Um, I'm pretty happy. Uh, I learn and I grow every day. I experience things and I learn to grow from them and I reach out to my mother and I reach out to people that I trust and I reach out to my husband and I, I talk and I interact and I find ways that make me grow and I'm just such, it's like I started as a seed and I'm just this big tree and I just, I love life. So that being said, off grid for us, why? Um, because we can be authentic and happy. The fears that others have about it, the worries or concerns or it's not for them, that's okay. That's absolutely okay. We'll be fine. I, I'm not worried, I'm not scared, um, I'm prepared, I am capable, I have a lot of common sense, so I'm not gonna get stuck in something, I'm not gonna do something that you see in the movies, and I know my husband won't, so that being said, we're, we're gonna be fine, so it's called, and um, until next video, please like and subscribe to our channel, that way you can follow our journey, and uh, we'll see you in the next video.